Well, Keenan, this advisory committee will convene virtually in a matter of hours. Now, they won't vote or make any decisions. Rather, this is a time for them to pinpoint exactly what they will require from pharmaceutical companies in order to, in the future, give the go-ahead to vaccinate children younger than 12. What are the data they really want to see when they do come to reconvene to assess the, both the safety and the effectiveness of the vaccine? That's the focus of today's meeting with members of the FDA's Vaccine and Related Biological Products Advisory Committee, says Dr. Molly O'Shea of Birmingham Pediatrics. So at this point, what they're doing is saying, hey, look, guys, we need you to give us this specific information for us to feel comfortable with younger children giving the go ahead. This is likely to include how many kids must be enrolled in clinical trials and what safety data will be required. Earlier this week, Pfizer, whose vaccine is already authorized for use in kids 12 and older, said it would begin testing in kids as young as five using smaller doses. It plans to enroll up to 4,500 children in its phase two and three trials. And if those results are positive, the company said it would ask health officials in September to approve access for younger kids. Meanwhile, Henry Ford Health System has been chosen as a trial site for Moderna's vaccine in younger kids. It's currently looking for volunteers six months old up to 11 for its two-phased study. Participants will be monitored for more than a year. While as a group, children do not suffer the significant illness from COVID as do adults, it is still yet to be determined the long-term consequences really to their behavioral health, physical health, and quite frankly, their academic trajectory. Vaccine advisors to the CDC have reported a higher than expected number of cases of a heart issue among younger people called myocarditis, swelling of the heart muscle after receiving a second dose of the Pfizer or Moderna vaccines. But the CDC reports this is still rare and most patients responded well to rest and quickly felt better. And it's not even clear yet if the vaccine is a contributor or not, because a certain number of kids in this age group are going to have myocarditis at this time of year anyway. But it's another reason why today's meeting, Dr. O'Shea says, is coming at such an important time. Especially now that there's this little bit of question mark around the myocarditis, they'll be able to ask more specific questions and have more specific data when that time comes. Now, that virtual meeting is happening all day. It does begin at 830. And for reference, generally when the FDA is considering a new pediatric vaccine, they request safety data from between 500 and 3,000 children. But because the COVID vaccine represents a new class of vaccines, that range is expected to be a little bit higher when the time comes. Of course, much more to come on this front, and we will be watching that meeting very closely today. Reporting live this morning, Jen Schantz, 7 Action News.